Welcome to Creepy, the best horror storyteller on YouTube. Part 1 It was supposed to be a routine date at work for Lila, a young journalist who had just landed her dream job at the New York Times. She had an interview scheduled with a renowned scientist, Dr. Adrian Carter, who claimed to have made a breakthrough in quantum physics. She was eager to learn more about his research and write a captivating story for the front page. She arrived at the Carter Institute, a towering skyscraper in the heart of Manhattan, and checked in at the reception. She was given a visitor's badge and told to take the elevator to the 87th floor where Dr. Carter's office was located. She thanked the receptionist and headed to the elevator lobby. She pressed the up button and waited for the elevator to arrive. She noticed that there were no other people waiting with her, which was unusual for such a busy building. She shrugged it off and assumed that everyone was already at their desks or in meetings. She heard a ding and saw the doors of the nearest elevator open. She stepped inside and pressed the button for the 87th floor. The elevator started to ascend smoothly and silently. Lila checked her phone and saw that she had a few minutes to spare before her appointment. She decided to review her notes and questions for Dr. Carter. She opened her notebook and scanned the pages. She had done extensive research on his background, his publications, and his latest project, which involved creating a quantum portal to access parallel universes. She was fascinated by the concept and wondered what it would be like to visit another world where everything could be different. She imagined meeting another version of herself or seeing how history had unfolded differently. She also wondered what dangers and risks such a portal could pose and how Dr. Carter planned to ensure the safety and ethics of his experiment. She was so engrossed in her thoughts that she didn't notice that the elevator had stopped moving. She looked up and saw that the display showed the number 87. She smiled and put away her notebook. She reached for the door handle, but it didn't budge. She tried again, but it was locked. She frowned and pressed the open button, but nothing happened. She pressed it again and again, but the doors remained shut. She felt a surge of panic and looked for the emergency phone. She found it on the wall and picked it up. She heard a dial tone and waited for someone to answer. She heard a click and a voice. Hello, this is the Carter Institute. How may I help you? Hi, this is Lila Jones, a journalist from the New York Times. I'm trapped in the elevator on the 87th floor. Can you please send someone to help me? There was a pause and then the voice said, I'm sorry, but there is no 87th floor in this building. Lila felt a chill run down her spine. She looked at the display again and saw that it still showed the number 87. She said, what do you mean? I'm looking at it right now. It says 87. I have an interview with Dr. Carter. He's on the 87th floor. The voice said, there is no Dr. Carter in this building. There is no Carter Institute. You must have the wrong address. Lila felt a wave of confusion and fear. She said, no, this can't be. I have the confirmation email right here. It says the Carter Institute, 555 Fifth Avenue, 87th floor. That's where I am. Please, you have to help me. I'm stuck in the elevator. The voice said, I'm sorry, but you're not in the Carter Institute. You're in the Fifth Avenue Tower, 555 Fifth Avenue, 55th floor. That's the highest floor in this building. There is no elevator above that. You must have taken the wrong elevator. Please hang up and try another one. Lila felt a surge of anger and frustration. She said, no, 
You're lying. This is some kind of prank or joke. It's not funny. Let me out of here. Now. The voice said, I'm sorry, but I'm not lying. This is not a prank or a joke. This is the truth. You're in the wrong building, on the wrong floor, in the wrong elevator. There is no way out. Please hang up and accept your fate. Lila felt a scream rise in her throat. She said, no, no, no. This can't be happening. This can't be real. You're crazy. You're insane. You're evil. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. She slammed the phone down and started to pound on the door. She shouted and screamed, hoping that someone would hear her and come to her rescue. But no one came. No one heard. No one cared. She was alone. Trapped. In an endless elevator. Part 2 Lila didn't know how long she had been trapped in the elevator. It felt like hours, days, maybe even weeks. She had lost track of time and hope. She had tried everything she could think of to escape, but nothing worked. She had called the emergency phone again and again, but the voice always gave her the same answer. She had pressed every button, pulled every lever, kicked every panel, but the doors remained locked. She had screamed and cried, but no one heard her or cared. She was hungry, thirsty, tired, and terrified. She had no food, no water, no light, no air. She felt like she was suffocating, starving, dying. She wondered if anyone was looking for her, if anyone missed her, if anyone loved her. She wondered if she would ever see her family, her friends, her colleagues again. She wondered if she would ever get out of this nightmare. She curled up on the floor and hugged her knees. She closed her eyes and tried to calm herself. She told herself that this was not real, that this was a hallucination, a delusion, a bad dream. She told herself that she would wake up soon, that she would find herself in her bed, in her apartment, in her life. She told herself that everything would be okay. But she knew that it was not okay. She knew that this was real. She knew that she was trapped. In an endless elevator. She opened her eyes and saw something that made her blood run cold. She saw a crack on the wall, a small, thin, barely visible crack. She stared at it and felt a surge of dread. She knew what it meant. She knew what it was. It was the portal. The portal that Dr. Carter had created. The portal that he had used to access parallel universes. The portal that he had invited her to see. The portal that had malfunctioned and trapped her in this elevator. She remembered what had happened before she got in the elevator. She remembered how she had met Dr. Carter in his office, how he had greeted her warmly and offered her a seat. She remembered how he had explained his research, his theories, his experiments. She remembered how he had shown her his device, a large metal ring with wires and coils attached to it. He had called it the quantum gate, the key to unlocking the secrets of the multiverse. He had told her that he had successfully opened a portal to another dimension, a dimension that was similar to theirs, but with some differences. He had told her that he had sent probes and drones through the portal and that they had returned with images and data. He had told her that he had seen wonders and horrors, things that defied logic and imagination. He had told her that he wanted to share his discovery with the world and that he wanted her to be the first to witness it. He had told her that he had prepared a special elevator, one that was connected to the quantum gate, and that he had programmed it to take her to the portal. 
He had told her that he would join her shortly after he activated the device and stabilized the portal. He had told her that it was safe, that it was controlled, that it was amazing. He had lied. He had lied to her, to himself, to everyone. He had not opened a portal to another dimension. He had opened a portal to hell. He had not created a quantum gate. He had created a quantum trap. He had not sent probes and drones through the portal. He had sent monsters and demons. He had not seen wonders and horrors. He had seen death and destruction. He had not prepared a special elevator. He had prepared a death trap. He had not programmed it to take her to the portal. He had programmed it to take her to nowhere. He had not joined her shortly. He had left her alone. He had not activated the device and stabilized the portal. He had detonated the device and destabilized the portal. He had not made a breakthrough in quantum physics. He had made a mistake in quantum physics. A fatal mistake. Lila realized that Dr. Carter was not a renowned scientist. He was a mad scientist. He was a murderer. He was a monster. She realized that she was not a journalist. She was a victim. She was a pawn. She was a sacrifice. She realized that she was not in the Carter Institute. She was in the 5th Avenue Tower. She was in the 55th floor. She was in the elevator. She realized that she was not on the 87th floor. She was on the dash 87th floor. She was in the basement. She was in the portal. She realized that she was not trapped in an endless elevator. She was trapped in an endless hell. She realized that she was not alone. She was surrounded. She was hunted. She was prey. She realized that she was not alive. She was dead. She was doomed. She was damned. She saw the crack on the wall widen and spread. She saw the wall crumble and collapse. She saw the portal open and swallow her. She saw the horrors that awaited her. She saw the monsters that lurked in the dark. She saw the demons that hungered for her flesh. She saw the eyes that glowed with malice. She saw the teeth that dripped with blood. She saw the claws that ripped and tore. She saw the pain that never ended. She saw the fear that never faded. She saw the death that never came. She screamed. But no one heard. No one cared. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more similar horror stories.